All right, what's up, everybody? So just want to share with you how I set up my own WhatsApp MCP server. And I got to tell you, it's marvelous. This essentially solves a problem that I've had with WhatsApp groups for a while now. Uh, there's actually only, I think, one service that I could recommend that allows you to build community using AI or at least a chatbot, and that would be Nas.io. So Nas.io actually allows you to be able to connect their online community platform with your WhatsApp groups using a linked uh, phone number, which acts as their chatbot. But this WhatsApp MCP server just goes a whole lot further because what it allows you to do essentially is set up a server that syncs with your WhatsApp account, and it can be personal or business. And then it will essentially download all of your WhatsApp messages to your local hard drive. And then using Claude code, uh, you can actually set up this MCP server to allow you to use its AI on those downloaded messages and interact with it, but not just interact with it through, you know, sort of search or summaries, those sort of things, but actually send messages um, straight from within Claude, Claude to your uh, WhatsApp groups. And it's just, this is, this is what I've been looking for uh, for a while. So I went through the entire process outlined by Luke Har Harry's. So uh, big shout out to Luke Harry's. This is brilliant work. Um, I'll share a link to this tweet so you can see it. And he then gave a link to his WhatsApp MCP server on GitHub and as well as a 11 labs one. And I'll do another video about the 11 labs MCP server. So going through everything, it was pretty straightforward for me. If you're somebody who has somewhat uh, of a background in with code, it should be fairly straightforward. But if you're new to it, really just go through it step by step. Uh, the only things that might be a little nuanced or something to remember are these parts here, one and two, okay? If you try to actually run something like Witch UV in your terminal, so if you are on Mac, uh, you will open up an application that exists there called a terminal, and you would essentially navigate to the folder um, in which you install this WhatsApp MCP server. And in order to essentially get which UV, you have to use homebrew uh, to install it. So let's see an example. Yeah, so essentially it says here, you see how you have pip install UV. Um, if you have something called homebrew, you can also do homebrew install UV, and it essentially will achieve the same thing. Um, and it'll, it'll just install the commands and the packages needed in order to run which UV. And then you'll get a, uh, a URL uh, location, and then you will just insert that into here. And then on the second one, you essentially just need to go to the parent folder of where you install WhatsApp MCP server. So essentially, if you go through all the instructions here, you'll know what I'm talking about. And you'll then run PWD to get the actual location that you need to insert here. So this is just the caveat for those who are doing this and then get stuck at this point. Um, but other than that, it is pretty straightforward. And so when you go through this, um, there will be a file that you'll need to create and if you're on a Mac, if you if you don't have libraries showing up on your hard drive, uh, there is an option for when you go to on the top nav. Uh, if you go to view and then options, uh, you can say show me library, and then that way you can see the library folder and navigate to here to create this this particular file. Okay, um, and yeah, just follow it straight through and. Uh, the bit that you'll want to make sure is running when you do this is this particular command. So at the beginning, you do actually uh, get this started, right? Um, even after you do all this, but there might come a point where you'll need to essentially exit or stop the running of this Go server in order to install some of the other packages. And if you happen to do that, just go back to this folder 
and then run that command again to run your server. And then pretty much inside Claude code, uh, you'll be able to uh, interact with your entire WhatsApp database. And this is an example of what it looks like um, inside Claude code. So I put here in the end, send a message to this group from me with a message, hey guys, this is a test uh, of a message from my new MCP server. And then if I go here, and then you can see this is actually inside that group, which is wild. Okay, now you'll notice here that I was also able to provide a summary of the group using Claude code run via the MCP server. And I don't know why this isn't a native feature yet in applications like WhatsApp, etc., or even on X. They don't offer this yet. It's 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 annoying. Um, so you end up you know seeing solutions like this. And I think this is going to be the way forward, especially for building up communities, because having these AI features just makes things easier for those who manage communities. Um, you can automate the things that need to be automated, and then just focus on the engagement and the experience, which is the more important aspect. Okay, so with this, I think this is, uh, again, pretty straightforward. So thank you to Luke for his work on this MCP server. And sorry, if you do not know what an MCP server is, MCP server stands for Model Context Protocol from Anthropic, the guys who created Claude. So that is what an MCP is. And essentially the way that MCP servers are being positioned as are essentially like the USB-Cs of the API world or the tools world. And it's something that just inserts itself in the middle, but allows builders to be able to build things a little bit better and a little bit more streamlined uh, for a world of AI. Now, another thing to be aware of with these MCP servers is because it's new and experimental, don't do anything you're not comfortable with yet. Okay, With MCP servers, you do have to guard yourself from just installing anything that anybody on X or Twitter uh, puts up. Uh, I try to you know, only look at MCP servers that are coming from guys who are engineers themselves or, you know, working for larger companies and know what they're doing. Uh, it just makes it that much uh, easier to, to run with. But also, even then, even the pros, the experts can make mistakes. So you just have to be aware that once you're installing this, this sort of stuff, that there's always a risk, okay? And so with that, I do recommend checking out these guys uh, from Invariant Labs. They have a tool um, called Invariant Guardrails, which is essentially a tool that you can install on your local hard drive that will help scan any new MCP servers that you happen to install to make sure that they're not leaking information or uh, potentially a threat uh, for your data. And, you know, this is essentially, this is going to become more of an issue, right? Because this new territory always occurs, but it's essentially like installing an antivirus software, right? Uh, but for MCPs. So if you are a builder or interested in this space, I highly recommend you check out uh, Guardrails by Invariant Labs. Okay. They have a related GitHub uh, repo where you can learn more about what exactly it's doing, and then you can install it yourself and try it out. Okay. So with that, I hope you enjoyed this little video around the WhatsApp MCP server. And if you have any questions, just let me know. Speak soon.